Welcome to 100 Days of DACA here on Law Great, the channel where we give you reliable information to help you make better decisions and avoid costly mistakes. That's me, Damian DeNoble, your narrator. I'm an attorney at Frontera Tech Law, and um, I will be going through a DACA, an actual DACA application here with redacted documents and everything. I'm really excited about the return of DACA. I'm excited about a Joe Biden administration. To be honest, the last uh, 2020 was a burnout year for myself and my team. Uh, we'd spent a lot of times in detention centers across the southeast and um, sometime down in um, Tijuana and um, other places um, around the southern part of the country where there were a lot of immigrants in detention and that just, it, it, was, it was burnout city. That's really hard work. It's worse for the families and the detainees. In any case, that's why we didn't have videos. But we are going to have 100 straight days of videos. The idea behind this series is to show DACA applicants who are DIYing, who otherwise do, who either don't have a choice to DIY or who just want to DIY themselves. And again, Law Great, the YouTube channel is all about DIY. Is, is how to put together a DACA application and do it safely and do it correctly. Uh, there's an emphasis on safely. Uh, anytime you turn in documents for immigration to the government, there is a risk factor. And so I wanna just make sure we avoid that. Okay, so what I have here, I have, I have kind of three packets of stuff. Uh, number one, I have the actual DACA application, okay? Uh, what we're going to be looking at in the entire time is this document checklist. This is available online. Uh, the link is in the video description. Uh, feel free to download it. It's freely available. Okay. And then we have uh, today's DACA applicant who we are going to call um, Alicia, uh, Alicia Fernandez. Okay. And uh, we're going to be working with, uh, uh, Alicia is going to be a Mexican national, okay? Um, and so I want to just kind of uh, familiarize you again, since this is the first video with what DACA is, okay? So DACA, which is the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, is a program which confers a type of deferred status. So instead of being out of status, i.e. in illegal status, or having some sort of permanent uh, status like uh legal permanent residency, i.e. the green card or citizenship. This is something in between that says, hey, you're not fully legal, but you can work. And actually, as of this week, you can qualify for federal mortgages. And hopefully, we're going to be able to add more and more things to that list as this does become a permanent status under Joe Biden. Fingers crossed. Okay. Um, uh, to qualify, there are several necessary elements for any applicant. The, the, there's big ones and then there's small ones. Okay, the big ones are you have to be of qualifying age. So on June 15th, 2012, you have to be have been under the age of uh, 31, which means that if your birthday is June 16th, 1981 or later, you're eligible. However, if it's June 15th, 1981 or before, you are not eligible. In addition, in addition to that age requirement, at the time of filing, you have to have you have to be 15 years old unless, right, unless you're in removal proceedings, have a final order of removal, um, and you are not in detention, okay? Um, besides that, you have to have entered the United States before the age of 16, okay? And then in addition, you have to have had unlawful status on June 15th, 2012. Unlawful status, what does that mean? Well, it doesn't just mean that you had to have originally entered without inspection. It could mean that, for example, that you overstayed your visa. It could mean that you ended up out of status in some other way. The important thing is that on June 15th, 2012, as odd as, odd as it sounds, on that day, you must have been in unlawful status. And then finally, you have to show proof of physical presence in the United States since June 2007, specifically June 15th, 2007. And there's lots of way to do this, and, and we're going to talk about it as we actually go through the evidence packet, okay? Um, and then the, the most famous part of this, are, arguably, is that you have an educational requirement. So either you're in school or you have a qualifying um, school completion certificate, like a GED or high school completion certificate, college completion certificate. There's other things that qualify, or you have some sort of military service that's qualifying. And then the final big thing is, if you have left the United States since June, since June 15th, 2007, we need to have it documented. 
Now, there are smaller things as we get into this application. There are smaller things that you're gonna have to worry about. Uh, for example, uh, in the yes, no questions, we, we have some inadmissibility questions or some questions that, you know, if, if answered, a, a, you know, as a no, could pose a barrier to getting DACA. Uh, the one that the, the ones that are most relevant for me are arrests. Have you been arrested for, charged with, or convicted of a crime in any country other than the United States, and in the uh, and then within the United States as well. Um, and then, have you ever been a member of a gang? And the and these tend to be ones that um, can trip up a lot of applications. Okay, that trip up a lot of applications, and we'll talk about the need for honesty on those and what can happen if if you're not honest. Okay. Um, so, without fur further ado, I, I kind of want to introduce us to our to today's um, applicant, who again we're calling Alicia Fernandez. Okay, and what we're going to do, we're going to put this um, 821D application aside. Okay, and we're going to work with our checklist. Okay, um, so our checklist is again the qualification checklist, and the way that we use this is that we want to basically do a screen, an initial screen. So we don't want to worry about all the forms that we have to file quite yet. We just want to see, does Alicia Fernandez, um, who's a Mexican national, does she otherwise qualify um, for uh, DACA? Okay, so the first thing we're going to start with is proof of identity and qualifying age. And remember, we want her to be born on June 16th, 1981 or later. Okay, and we want to have one of the following, at least one of the following to, to, to document that. Okay, so passport, birth certificate, some sort of national identity document. So uh, for Mexican nationals, getting a Mexican consulate, a consular ID from your local consulate is, is a good one. Any U.S. government with a document with name and photo. So... For some state residents of Maryland and California, notably, you might have a driver's license. Uh, you might have an expired driver's license if you're in North Carolina, for example, where we stopped, um, where our laws passed by our legislature actually uh, prevented folks from getting driver's licenses after I think it's 2011. And then we have school issue photo IDs, and I bolded that because most people are going to have this. Okay, for, for, for DACA, most folks are going to have some sort of school issue photo ID. So if you're enrolling in a new program, be sure that this, this is something that, that you keep on you. And then, of course, the military photo ID. So let's see what we have here. Here we kind of have uh, the perfect thing, okay? Now, what I've done is I've redacted um, all sensitive information so we can't identify who actually our Alicia Fernandez is. And this is a birth certificate, okay? And what this says is that this person was born well after 1981. In fact, um, some 20 years after, so this is a 2001 birth date. So this alone, this birth certificate, okay, would satisfy element one, okay? This person is um, is of qualifying age. They were born after 1981. And this birth certificate, which is certified, conclusively proves their identity. Now, one tip about this birth certificate, okay? One tip is you have to get this translated, okay? And you want it to be a certified, 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 okay, translation. Okay, so that's the tip there, certified translation. Okay, but this is document one, so we're gonna put this aside, okay? And we'll bring it back in later. Okay, now we need something that, that shows us proof of entry to the United States before age 16. Okay, now, here we have a 2001 birthday, okay? Um, and so, what we wanna make sure is that they've entered before 2017, okay? Um, but really, it needs to be before 2007 because, again, one of our one of our um, one of our requirements is proof of physical presence before 2007. So we're looking at something between the birthday in 2001 and June 15th, 2007. And here we have um, a very good example of something that um, is uh, just amazing to have. Okay, um, so if we go to our list of proof of entry, there's two really uh, really amazing pieces um, of evidence that I always love to see, which are school records and medical records, okay? Um, and the reason we like these is because they can typically cover you for several years just on their own, okay? And we're going to see here, because this is an ideal doc application, I wanted to start the um, video series with an ideal application, that we, that we have both medical and school records, okay? 
Um, this is really interesting. This is an actual school, this is an actual um, immunization record. This is from here, from Durham, North Carolina. And again, I've, I've taken out all of the, um, and again, I've taken out all of the, um, uh, redacted all the information that could be identifiable. Okay, there's a couple of interesting things to notice here. One is we have this word here, which actually says Mexico, okay? And the and then you have these three squares. It's month, uh, day, year, or day, month, year. I don't remember. The important part is that this, this last bit is the month, okay? Where I've uh, highlighted in orange um, are health agencies inside the United States that conducted these vaccinations. Each of these dates corresponds to a certain vaccination. So in 010202, we can see that this Alicia Fernandez was still in Mexico in 010202. But then in 04 and 06, 04, 04, and 09, she was here in the United States because that's where she received her uh, this particular vaccine. This alone places her inside of the United States um, after um, uh, uh, after before her 16th birthday and actually before 2007. Um, so what we want to do is actually go back to our checklist here, page one, we have proof of entry. Just, just with that alone, we have proof of entry, okay? So that's already two things that are satisfied. This is actually the same as that back page, okay. And so the next thing is that we need to show that, uh, you know, that, that there is proof of unlawful immigration um, status, okay? Um, so this is uh, one of those where it's like, well, how do you prove that somebody had, had no status? And again, this is the birth certificate, this is this. Well, actually, simply by, in this case, simply by um, uh, uh, having the birth certificate and, and having her identity uh, verified, we can show that at no point in time has this applicant you know, with this name, this birth date, has this applicant um, received any sort of lawful immigration status, okay? And so, and so that's how that would be proven. Uh, sometimes, sometimes you would have um, uh, charging documents from the INS, which would now be the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, you might have uh, immigration uh, court records asking somebody to appear for a removal proceeding, but in this case, it's, it's just their verified identity. Okay, so the, just the fact that they have no status. So we actually we actually check that off just like that. All right, and so then then the the one that can be a, the other one that can be a big toughie in addition to showing you've been here since before you were 16 is proof of physical presence. Okay, so typically we want to show proof for every month between June 15th, 2007, and today, the day of your application, right? The day of your application, we want to show proof for every month that you've been here. Um, in this case, we have something really amazing, and uh, this is a list, right, of stuff that we could have. And, and again, you can find this, the link to this document um, in the description of this video. We want to find proof um, that shows um, that somebody's been here month to month. Okay, so the absolute best way, in my opinion, um, is to have a transcript, okay? And in fact, to have a transcript for the entirety of your... Um, of your time in the United States, okay? So in this case, we have that. Again, I've redacted everything. I just wanna point out some important parts on this document, right? First of all, this is an NC transcript from North Carolina. It's an official transcript. Okay, we, we would have the student name there. It's been redacted, the student number, which would further confirm them, their birth date, which again, we could uh, refer to the birth certificate as being the correct one, and their graduation date. Okay, so the graduation date is gonna be important for our last element, which is showing that, that they've actually completed um, an educational degree here. And then this is the gold mine in terms of in terms of showing time. Here we have attendance information and we see um, on this paper that they completed school in 07 to 08, 08, 09, 09, 010, 10, 11, 11, 12, 12, 13. Okay, we know that at least since August of 07 when schools typically start here in North Carolina through, um, and their graduation, you know, would have been around 2020. I'm not going to give the date because high schools have different graduation dates. I don't want to identify them, uh, but you see elementary, elementary, middle, middle, high, high, high. Uh, we have we have them verified here for basically every month because they have to go to school every month during that time. Okay, um, so did we prove all months? 
we haven't actually quite proven all months. We still need June and July. How do we make up for June? Well, we have this lovely kindergarten certificate with a June 2007 uh, date. Okay, well, what about July? Well, if, if you have June and August 2007 every month thereafter, um, you know, we're, we're gonna assume it's there. And also, this also means she was in kindergarten, which we didn't have on there. Okay, so, so it means she was in school 06, 07, okay? And again, we have another certificate. And again, here we have another certificate just backing that up, June 2007, sixth day. Um, and that, to me, would then meet this requirement here, okay? So, so far, so good. Uh, proof of educational requirement. We saw that transcript, that transcript on its own, and again, just seeing the transcript, this does double duty for us, okay? The transcript does double duty. It does show a graduation date here, okay? If you can see that, graduation date. And so it's checked off there. And in this case, there were no trips abroad. So we checked that off, okay? So on the surface, on the surface, um, this person generally is ready to apply for DACA, right? They're eligible. Now, what we want to do from here is do um, an in inadmissibility screening. So I'd want to check to see, does this person have um, any removal record? Does this person have any drug offenses in particular? Do they have any aggravated assault offenses? Um, have they left the country for a long period of time? We already said no in this case. Have they been a member of a gang? And that, that comes down to these uh, questions, which are on page four of the DACA application. Um, and we are going to have a screener for you available. I don't have it yet, but um, the answer here is that this, after I would get through that screen, I would be comfortable in saying, okay, let, let's go and apply. So it's, it's really two steps. It's one, do they generally qualify? And then two, is there some sort of red flag, some sort of inadmissibility um, warning in particular that might make us think twice about filing this application? Okay, now what we're going to get to in future videos, what we're going to get to in future videos is uh, situations that aren't this clean, that aren't this clean with DACA. Um, but if you want to just see if, if, if you are eligible, you might want to just download this form, which again is, uh, has a link uh, to this form in the comments of this video. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, we're going to put it in the comments of the actual video. And just, just practice along and then come back and we'll be doing this every day. Thank you so much.